hate it, but uh, obviously the rules are in place for a reason. So I just wanted to make that make that known. Yes, sir. Be before you answer me, Tom, have you gotten complaints on that property previously? I had not. You had not. Okay. The information that where I, where I received that information was from. It, long story. This gentleman actually helped me <coughs> find the owners, so that I could buy the property. I've been. It was. It, I know it might sound silly to some. It's not on the ocean or river, but it was. <coughs> this piece of property happens to be my dream. My dream property, and this and he helped me. It's a. It's another story for another time, but uh, he helped me find it and. I don't know where I was going with that. I apologize. You're, you're pointing to Officer Ramsey. Are you? You mean he? In, on it, before all this happened, uh -huh. I couldn't find the owner of the property. Okay, uh -huh. I got and, it. Okay, and he helped me locate him. Okay, before we even knew who each other was. Right, right. And you're right. I didn't. I wasn't completely cutting down the trees, and I didn't go into this property saying I want to cut down trees. I want to go in. I wanted to go in. My my comment to the guy that I hired was, I wanted to look like a park. Exact. If you ask anyone that knows that's been on that property during this time, that's what I, that's been my statement. I want it to make, be a nicer looking piece of property until I can build on it. I want to try to start. My goal is by the end of next year to try to start building on this property. And yes, you you are right. It was it was maybe for I don't know selfish would be the right word, but it wasn't for that reason. It was just it was just a, a, a project that m my family had taken on. As a matter of fact, we plan to go out there uh, over the next several weekends and start pulling vines out of the trees that mm -hmm. are still there. And in the trees that were cut down, some of them were scrub oaks that I just seedlings from other oaks, and some of them I have one of the pictures is a rotten pine tree, and some of them are are not <coughs> rotten or, or seedlings. There was one oak tree. It was cut down, and it was uh, the reason it was cut down was they were there, and I knew that's where the house was going. And I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about this whole situation since this has happened. And if I had it to do over, I this has been a, a big stressful situation for me for over a month now. Mm -hmm. And I would not get. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Especially, I take things very personal. I. I'm concerned about the beauty of our town. I think I've helped it. I've helped it along my my journey in life, and never have I broke a code violation or done anything to harm trees or any, or anyone else for that matter. I should say, but um, I, I'm just asking for some a fair uh, a fair shake on this thing. You you would like us to consider cutting the fine or? The amelioration of the problem. I would just like to. Um, I think eight thousand dollars is a lot of money. For sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, let, let me Wait, just you, brief you a little bit on the, what okay. the ordinances say. Uh, you do have authority to reduce civil penalties if right. you so choose. If you find that he right. is uh, responsible for this violation, um, you do not have authority to reduce mitigation costs nor uh, enforcement okay. costs. Okay. Uh, and keep in mind, should you find there's a violation and this gentleman's responsible, you are obligated to provide him uh, a reasonable amount of time to correct the violation, which would be to take care of the mitigation. And, and uh, Mr. McGarry actually could address uh, what mitigation could involve. It could involve payment into the tree fund. It could involve replacement of trees. <coughs> Uh, but that's something that perhaps he could work out with would the planning it be possible? department. I would like to hear from Mr. Sure. <coughs> Tim, in fact, Tim, uh, were, I already swore in. Okay. I knew I might have to talk. <laughs> Believe it or not. If you show up, you have to talk. I show up as a talker. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, I had sat down with the individual to work out a compliance agreement. Okay. And I explained this all to him, which you had the authority to do. And I was certainly willing, at that time, said if he'd pay his fine, we could enter in a, a compliance agreement. And that's what we had, which basically I would uh, give him a period of time that he could pay the mitigation over that period of time. I'm still willing to do that. It's kind of different because normally when you do a compliance agreement, you've waived your right to a hearing. But I can talk to Wayne about that. I, I mean, we could work out a, a term that, because he can't, he needs to pay the mitigation and get the permit. And I'm not going to release the permit. 
So that means he still won't be in compliance and that until fee, we do that. That fee comes to what? The 57 14. 14. He needs to pay the And money. he can either pay a mitigation fee or he can plant other trees. Right. And I just want to point out we don't just let you cut trees down this city. You got to have a reason. Right. Either trees dying, all that. Right. Unfortunately, there are no trees here. I mean, you, you, you know, there was no investigation that. But we look at site plans when they come in. We don't, you know, and we uh, would recommend alternatives so people can just just plump a house down and take trees right. out. Okay, so coming in ahead of time and cutting trees down is not the way things are done in this city. And uh, he, this gentleman should know he owns uh, 10 other properties. And oh. that shows you, you should have some due diligence here. So, Tim. and But I'm willing to work with him because, uh, I'm sorry, did you want to say something? No, I was just going to say, at yeah. this point, it's before the yeah. board. And I think any agreement is going to have to be with the board as to what the board right. allows. And that will be part of the, fun, uh, of the order that's entered. Okay. And that, that's fine for me finds. because it's beyond what I can really do under a compliance agreement, well, you know, on, under the code. But we would be willing to work out uh, some sort of payment schedule to take care of it so he can pay this fine. Well, and I, Not I to find the mitigation, I'm sorry. Okay. The, the fine is up to you all how you want to, to, to do that. Well, right? We don't yes, have sir. much control over that either. Um, but well, you know, Yes, you do. I mean, I think you... It was the fine was what two thousand fifty. You certainly could reduce that fine. You just can't, you can't reduce, reduce the mitigation, mitigation fine. Yes, uh, okay. portion of okay. it. So, so he cuts down an oak tree, right? Full size oak tree, and he's able to replace a tree. Does that mean he gets to replace it with a? Sapling? No, he has to replace it with a similar tree. So it has to be a big. Full yeah, size and that's how we do the cost of this thing. We determine what a, an oak tree of certain size is. We keep up costs, and that's how our public works department gives us the cost, ongoing cost to that. So the thing is, he's not, uh, you know, he could replace the tree, but he has to make the the, 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 DV, the diameter. I forgot how many inches all that is, so he have to meet that. So right. he could do a series of smaller trees to do that. So well, the different ways, and we'll work whatever he wanted to, I was mm -hmm. willing to work with. Mm -hmm. my, my, yeah. my thinking is if you could sit down with him and work out an agreement and come back to us at some point, maybe <laughs> some small trees or the fine or whatever, the mitigation factors, but... If you can work it out the simple way, I think that would be the better way for everybody to solve a problem. But that's not my call. I, I'm going to I'm going to say I understand where you're coming from, but I'm going to um, I may I may choose to put a motion uh, forward that would say that we keep the cost of mitigation and the civil penalty. I mean, I'm sorry, in the enforcement cost, um, maybe reduce or eliminate i don't know if we can reduce we might have to just eliminate this, the uh, penalty right well you 20. can but honestly at this point you really don't need to go that far mm -hmm. what you would need to do today is to basically give the gentleman if, if there is going to be a again this is premised upon the <clears throat> board being unanimous and finding there's a violation and this gentleman's responsible if you find that what you need to do is then give him time to do the correction the mitigation and then it will come back to this board for a compliance hearing. So, so it's going to come back to you again, and you could decide at that time how much, if any, to reduce the civil penalties. Okay. Because it's dependent on, upon him bringing the, the situation into compliance with the code. And okay. let me ask so. you, uh, uh, Wayne, then on that, if, if we decide that if he's meeting mitigation through payment, that could be part of what we bring back to the code board, Absolutely. correct? I just want to be sure. That, Absolutely. That, that, but Mr. obviously you want it fully mitigated before the right. board does a final right. order in the case. Okay. Well, so, since they're going to have to okay the, the thing, we need to reach a, the staff. We need to reach agreement with him before we mm -hmm. would, when we come back to you all. And to you can make final. a recommendation yes, at that Yes, that would be the way to do right. it. Right. Okay. I would like to make a motion that uh, <clears throat> you sit down with the gentleman work out to the best of your abilities to come up with a solution and then come back to this board at a, at a, a future date. That's my motion. I, I will second that motion. Oh, I'm um, sorry. When you cut these trees down, are they still laying there? Can we order someone else to no, They were carried away? Well, hmm? oh, I see it's a little trailer. When, with they're in the process. When, uh, huh? They're in well, the process of being Yes, removed. most of them have been removed. Uh, uh, I had a certain, I believe, 10 days to get the... The, the Can I make a suggestion, yes, especially if there's some still there? Have You said that one of the pine trees was diseased. and Find yourself an arborist. Have him come and examine the trees. You can cut down the diseased tree. Okay. Well, 
in, in all fairness, uh, the the the, um, the trees that were I don't, I don't even know if they were diseased or not. It, they were just looked like they were a hundred years old and they got rotten and started to That's crumble. That's the, the best, for pine tree. <laughs> best way I can Human explain it. Bad for trees. I, I think what Mr. Noonan's saying is if you could somehow find out from an arborist if. Some of the trees that you already cut down had Save disease. You that might, might be able be to something. mitigate yourself a little bit. Of you might be able to talk to Tim about <laughs> the fact that one or two or three of those trees were actually diseased and they were going to die anyway. Oh, sure. But Tim's not happy with that. Tim doesn't like that. <laughs> well, no. Not, not, the, the deed's been done. So, right. you know, if he's going to do any more trees, he needs a permit well. and he needs to get an arborist that can determine. But he still needs permits to take the trees. Right. Right. I think we agree that he needs permits, but I think the. I, there's a motion on the floor to yeah, mr. chairman I know you have a motion on the floor but that sounds like all it is is continuing this case mm -hmm. for an indeterminate amount of time and so he knows what whether or not he definitely has to do something you really need to have a finding of whether or not he's violated the code and put that into an order and then give the time for him to come into compliance whether it's 30 days 60 days or whatever Okay. Okay. I, I mean, that's just my suggestion that make the record clear. The question: who, How much did you pay this fellow to cut these trees down? About four thousand oh. dollars. Oh. How much? Four grand. Four. Okay. Mr. Pizzi, yeah. P let me. I want to. I, I make a motion that we find okay. a gentleman. Now you have a motion on the floor, All and right. Mr. Howe seconded it. So you want to withdraw your original motion, and I, then I make a motion to withdraw my motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Second that motion. Okay. <laughs> I, I want to make sure I get this clear. Okay. I make a motion that we find the gentleman guilty of the UFO mentioned uh, violations, mm -hmm. and okay. that a meeting take place. No, Be you don't have to go that far. Okay. Just okay. State amount of time for him to come into compliance. I believe we should give him no more than 30 days to 60 days up to the board's uh, discretion on that. Whatever well, that, that well, means to be in compliance or to have an arrangement in place with the planning department. Well, to be come back in here one way or the other. How about, are, how about he comes back in the, at the January code board meeting? That's, that's perfect. I make a motion that you, you must come back here with some kind of answers by the January meeting. And pictures of what you've done. I'm not sure. I'd okay. risk this we have found you guilty. I understand that. And we're asking oh, yeah. <laughs> that you come back here after sitting down with Mr. McGarry with a solution to ameliorate the Mitigate. violations one way or the other through mitigation or fines. Okay. And we would like to have that answer, and then we can deal with that from that step forward. We can deal with the other monetary portion of it based on what? You guys bring to us next month. That's what he's okay. saying. Okay. Would okay. you be open to wait until February with Christmas and well, New Year's? And I, I, I'm going to have to agree with that. It, with all the holidays, it's well. This is just to work out the plan with Mr. McGeary, not to do the mitigation. Right. right. Okay. Well, then I'll, I'll second. Uh, I'll second that motion. All in favor. Aye. Aye. And all opposed. Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> non-compliance reports. Uh, this is for request for notice of assessment, case number 14-CE-5128, Acacia Treasure Coast, LLC. Requesting a notice of assessment for case 14-CE-5128, the violators Acacia Treasure Coast, LLC, Errol Adamer and Marie Shear were cited for the violation of weeds, grass, or undergrowth at a height of more than 12 inches throughout the property and building materials, brick pavers on the property without an approved or current building permit at 1110 Royal Palm Boulevard. Service of the citation was provided by certified return receipt. No request for a hearing on the citation was received, so a hearing to contest the citation has been waived and the violation was deemed admitted by the violator. The violation of weeds, grass, or undergrowth has been corrected as of 1019. The brick pavers are still on the property without a current or approved building permit, and the civil penalty on the citation was paid 11-5. Requesting enforcement cost of 56-48, please. And continuing penalties. Can you get that closer to you? Mm -hmm. 
What were the penalties? Fifty six forty eight. No, that's, the, that's the enforcement cost. Enforcement cost. Oh. What is it, $50 a day? We got $50 a day. That's gotten up to how much now? Roughly. And well, it wouldn't. If this is just for a notice of assessment, there's nothing assessed yet. Oh, that's well. It'll just revert back to the starting date, which what was the correction date given? October 7th, Melody. I'm checking. Bear with me. 10 7. And so they would, the civil penalty, the continuing penalties would commence on um, October 8th. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll make a motion that the uh, violation has been corrected. The violation has not, has not completely been corrected. Been Part of it's been corrected. Correct. Still need Still need a uh, permit for the pavers. I spoke with Errol Latimer when he came in to pay the fine, requested, as in the citation, that the brick pavers be stacked at the rear of the property. It was started. It was never finished. In the last month, nothing has changed. May I ask when you met with this person? When he came in and paid the fine. What, when was that? How long ago? 11-5. Okay, so it's over a month. Mr. Hmm. Adamer's girlfriend is had hopes of rehabbing the property. It's the large two-story apartment on Royal Palm. I know that right now the property is unsecured. There's been a problem with vagrants. Okay. Mr. Adamer has expressed that he could donate it to the city for police or fire department training, which they would be interested, but they don't have the resources or the ability to burn it or take it. Mm -hmm. Historic landmark, that building. I've just been by you know, I think you know we've tried everything to get it. I mean, it's just I think. Okay, we have we have a motion on floor, sir. Well, I was gonna I was gonna say that uh, I find that the uh, weeds, grass, and overgrowth violation has been corrected, but the building materials violation has not been corrected, and I'd like to find that uh, we penalize them for the enforcement cost of fifty eight no fifty six forty eight. And right. continuing penalties of fifty dollars a day, um, beginning October the eighth. Right. I get that. And right? that would be just the to by the issuance of a notice of assessment. By the issuance of a notice of assessment, correct. I have a second. Second. Thank you. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All opposed. Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you, Officer Sanderson. I don't know this building. If you speak to the gentleman, he's, if he's looking for somebody to donate it to, you should talk to somebody with the historic group around town because they love rehabbing those old buildings. It was built probably 24. Nice building. Okay, request for board order case number 14 CE 5087. It's for uh, violator Brenda Laflame. Laflame. It's a request for a board order for case number 14CE-5087. The violator, Brenda LaFlam, has excessive storage of items and trash and debris at her property at 4215 15th Street. And it's been provided in the backup materials. Service of the citation was provided by posting and is provided on file with the city clerk's office. The violation has been corrected as of December the 9th, and the civil penalty assessed on the citation has not been paid. Enforcement costs of $43.09 are requested by the city. An affidavit of those itemized costs has been filed with the board clerk. We request the board issue a board order stopping the continuing penalties as of December 8, 2014 and assess initial civil penalties of $100 and the cost of enforcement of $43.09. All right. Are you asking for the continuing penalties up to December 8th or just a total of $100? No, up to December the 8th. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it was $100 per day. Correct. All right. I'll make a motion that uh, there was a violation. The violation was corrected on December 9th that the uh, board issued an order payment of the original $100 civil penalty. $43.09 cost of prosecution and the continuing penalties from the original date of correction through December 8th. I'll second that. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Noonan. Case number 14-CE-5135. Violators Jose, Gabriel, and Margarita Barajas. This is a case we heard last month for a notice of assessment, and I'm requesting that the board withdraw the notice of assessment. It was, uh, as it turns out, I finally got to, to speak with someone. Nobody within the home speaks English. Um, I spoke to the person who loaned the money for them to purchase the home. That day, he had a crew out there and fixed all the problems. Oh. So I think the problem from the beginning has been a language problem. Once they knew of the problem, they fixed oh. it that day. So uh -huh. I'd just like to withdraw the commendable assessment. Very nice. Okay. I'll, I'll make a notion. Uh, um, make a notion. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <You> hear that? <laughs> that too. <laughs> I'll make a motion that uh, we withdraw the notice of assessment uh, that was imposed upon uh, case number 14-CE-5135, Jose Gabriel and Margarita Brajas. I'll second that motion. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <laughs> Hearing none, motion carries. Case number 13-CE-4631, violator is Brian Wyckoff, 1 West Bank. This case came before the board in May of 2014 for a public nuisance. The board found the property was not in compliance, continuing penalties and enforcement costs. The property has changed hands and came into compliance on November 14th, requesting that the daily fine be stopped. Effective the 15th? Where is this? I mean the, the 14th. 14th. Well, uh, 13th, actually. It's to assess the total fine and the cost of enforcement, right? Right. Through November 13th or 14th? No, 14th. 14th. Where is this property? 2411 Buena Vista Boulevard. Okay. So the new owner doesn't want to, is that who's saying they don't want to pay it from buying the property? Did I understand that right? No, I'm stopping the fine. The new owner will probably at some point dialogue with you. There's a question of whether it was bought for flipping or resale. There is a current violation for removing the public nuisance without a permit and an unpaid fine. So you will hear this again next month. <laughs> well, thanks. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion that... Um, we assess the total fine and that we, that the, the, the I'm sorry, that the, um, the case is in violation. Brian Wyckoff, they are in violation. No, they're in correction. They, they have corrected the violation and that the total assessed fines, that the, the, the total fines be assessed and that the continuing penalties stop as of November the 14th. Is that what you're asking for? Yes. And there were costs of enforcement? Oh, yes. what was that? The enforcement cost was seventy nineteen. And the enforcement cost of seventy dollars and nineteen cents included. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, for clerks matters, we need to approve uh, the annual report. Um, I make a motion that the annual report be approved. Where is it? I don't see it. <laughs> so short. It went right by oh, you. It was so fast. <laughs> went right by you. Sorry, I didn't. I don't look at all that stuff. Did you want to read it? I read the first two pages of the last page. Thank you. This is even shorter than the old. Uh, mm -hmm. Where is that report? Item 9A, it's one page. Pass it down. Yeah, here you go. Take a quick look at that. I've seen it already. That's a great report. I think it's terrific. I think she, she did a well fantastic done. job. Borrow my glasses. No, sure. <laughs> you sound vicious in your discussion. You a couple months ago. I saw it already. <laughs> the novelty wore off.
So of the 11 meetings, we've heard 41 cases, some of them for a couple of different times. And then um, this can, my question's always, you know, we, we settle on a, a fee or a, whatever, we're charging the people. And then my question is, when do we find out if in fact they ever paid it after the 30 days? Or is that all? So they don't pay it. You don't. <laughs> we never find that clerk, out. Kate, clerk, that's, it's, it's the city's at that point. It's okay. up to the city. This then board is no longer involved in the case at that point. And then a lien is put on the property, and then that's right. their problem. Right. Well, I'll make the motion that we accept this report. I'll, uh, I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, for... Uh, <clears throat> The attorney's matters. Uh, Mr. Comment, if you want to tell us a little bit about the ordinance changes and amendments in our agenda. Sure. Um, <clears throat> Sherry, I think, distributed an updated version of some amendments to the code enforcement ordinance. The council wanted it clarified that this board, they don't want interpreting the code, just applying the code to the facts that are presented to you. And that's basically, and of course we know where that came from. It came out of that vacation rental case that we had. Mm -hmm. um, the court in that case, um, of course, upheld the decision of the board, but that's all they did. They did not give an actual ruling that said this is why. And it's the, the problem with these kind of administrative cases is, what the court looks at is the cold record and, of course, listens to the arguments of the parties. And if there's anything in the record to support the decision that's in front of them, they're going to uphold it. But they didn't go so far as to come back and say, well, your code, they didn't say the code's vague and can't be enforced or anything like that. And so it's just limited to that one instance, that one case. Um, Mr. McGarry is also adding some definitions. We, we worked with him to add some definitions to the code to help clarify the, the vacation rental situation. Uh, but this was also to clarify there was a little bit of conflict in the code, whereas if you read the provisions of the code enforcement ordinance, it would lead you to believe that if they didn't take the administrative appeal of an interpretation of the code to the appropriate department of the city, in other words, Different departments have different enforcement uh, duties and authority, whereas Tim McGarry, as the planning director uh, in the planning department, he has specific authority to interpret the code having to do with land use. Uh, the city engineer has a specific authority to interpret things having to do with drainage and rights of way, things like that, and plats and what have you. The building official has specific authority to interpret the building code. And so, <clears throat> What our code had was that a violator that contested the interpretation of the code could appeal to that department, that department director. And then there's a specific um, appeal process in place where typically it would go from the department head to either the city manager or it would go to a specific board such as decisions in the, of the planning director go to the planning and zoning board that deals with land use matters. Um, decisions of the building official go to the board of building appeals that has the expertise in building uh, things. Um, but our code stated that if they did not make that appeal on the interpretation of a code provision, and this board made a decision based on the interpretation, then they couldn't appeal that interpretation. So it kind of conflicted with the other provisions of the code that said these officials are the ones that interpret, and it was, it didn't say you couldn't specifically interpret the code, but the city council has made clear they want it to work that way. That's why we, that's the main gist of the amendments that were being made. If, say, this gentleman came in front of you today and said, oh, I don't believe that's the way you should interpret the code. Well, what it would pro provide for if this is adopted by the council in January is that if someone came in and, and 
said that, that I contest this because it's being interpreted wrong, you would ha you would basically be obligated to just suspend the case and allow him to go ahead and make that appeal to the appropriate authority. In that case, it would be a, it's a land use issue, so it would go to Mr. McGarry, and then he would have to go through that appellate process all the way to the city council. And, in fact, a person can appeal a decision of the city council uh, to the circuit court if they so choose. But once that is finally determined, the, the interpretation of the code, it would then come back to you unless they found that, the, based on the interpretation, there wasn't a violation. But if the interpretation was as thought to be by the code officer from the start, then it would come back to this board for a determination of whether or not there was a violation based on the interpretation um, that came back from the the authority that had the um, uh, the power to you know interpret that code provision. So it really simplifies it for this board that look, this is the code, and then you listen to the facts. And you apply that code to the facts and determine if there's a violation or not. Okay. I know that we don't have a, um, a vote, if you will, in what transpires with regard to these changes. Uh, that's going to be up to city council. Uh, I did read this. This all comes back from the agenda numbers uh, for the city council meeting last week, numbers 5A and 5B, which I did read, and I had a a lot of questions I want to ask you, and so because I put those papers in a safe place, I'm not sure where those questions are. <laughs> so I'm going, to, I'm going to try to just, uh, just for my own sake uh, of understanding, uh, try to remember at least a few questions I had for you, Mr. Clement, uh, with regard to these changes. I did see that the uh, changes do simplify code um, and uh, the language that's used in code for planning and for zoning and in a lot of other ways um, but a couple of things I wanted to know in reading it <clears throat> I was I got the impression that perhaps now now going back to the the where this stemmed from was the short-term rentals I was on planning and zoning at that time and uh, of course Tim McGarry was in charge and he and I were of the uh, uh, same uh, opinion with regard to that and, and that's great but when I was reading this uh, I read it as though Mr. McGarry basically can and should interpret uh, planning and zoning and that he can pretty much say whatever he pleases as long as the board doesn't uh, vote against that. So if the board always defers to staff, basically it would give Tim the ability to basically say whatever he wants. Is right. That, is yeah. that right? Right, and like I said, only if a violator that's contesting a citation contests the interpretation, then that kicks in that they have to go the other administrative appeal route. This board wouldn't make the decision as to the interpretation or application of the code. You would have to rely on the interpretation you were given by the official unless it's interpreted uh, the, the interpretation is contested by the violator, and they go through the violation process, and that interpretation changes. Okay. So essentially what it does is, I mean, really it instills more, if you will, I guess more power to Tim, but at the same time it simplifies the process so that we don't have conflicting decisions from right. two different boards. This doesn't, but this makes it clear that the board isn't too do its own interpreting. You rely on the expertise of the department head or, like I said, after that appellate process, you would use that interpretation that comes out of the appellate process. Okay. But, yes, it, it, it doesn't instill any more power in the, any department head because they already have that in their various sections of the code. So this just makes it clear that you are to rely on that Unless, and it's the call of the violator whether or not they want to contest the interpretation. Okay. And I can tell you that in all my years with the city, we've only had one case where the interpretation of a code provision was contested. Mm -hmm. And we know which case that was. That's right. That's right. And um, moving forward with these changes, um, there, were, there was talk, I don't know if you recall, 
and obviously we barely have a quorum here today, but maybe a year and a half ago or two years ago, there was talk of uh, a magistrate. And so my question is, uh, does anything, does it, any of this language water, water down the purpose of the code enforcement board so much that, in fact, what will happen is we'll negate uh, the need for it and we'll, we will have a magistrate in place? No, th this board serves as the magistrate right now, and it's been brought, again, in my tenure here, it's been brought to the code board, I mean, to the city council two or three times, and every time they've said, no, we like having a board made up of local citizens. Mm -hmm. So, but, and remember, if you look at the the uh, code enforcement ordinance in toto, then in total, uh, the same rules that apply to this board apply to a magistrate. If it just has the authority in there, the, the council had created the position of magistrate, but it's up to them to fill it if they want to. But all the same rules come into play for a magistrate, too. I'd like to say for the record that as long as we have enough people to uh, volunteer their time to be representative of the city, like we do, I, I prefer to see that remain in place myself as well. Um, and uh, finally... I wanted to ask if, uh, because this got me to, to thinking about this, um, we, had a, we had a case a few months back, and I apologize because I don't remember the details, but at one point we made a decision that we wanted to rescind at a later meeting, which in fact we could not rescind. It had to go to city council to be rescinded. Do you remember that? Schlitt. Schlitt? Schlitt was the last name of the That's general. right, yeah. Right, yeah. right. And Is so... To me, as long as we're simplifying things, in my mind, we made the original decision. Wouldn't it simplify everybody's right. uh, um, meeting to allow us to make decisions like that? And, and I'm not sure if there's any language yeah. with regard it, to that in here or if there's... No. And I'll tell you why. Because uh, we follow state law, Chapter 162, in that regard. What that says is that once the lien, the once the order, the certified copy of the order is recorded in the public records, it becomes a lien on all property of the violator where the violation occurred, and also on all other property that the violator owns, personal property, real estate, except just between you and me, it doesn't attach to homestead property. Mm -hmm. um, then what it is, it's just considered a debt owed to the city at that point. And the only authority over whether or not debts are remediated or forgiven or reduced is the city council. Okay. Well, I understand. And that's, that's, it's written that way in the state law, and we've kept it that way in our own ordinance. Okay. And you happen to know if they did go in front of the city council and they did get it? No. He paid it, the whole thing, I think. So I believe it wasn't that much anyway. It was a couple thousand dollars. No, it was only a couple thousand dollars, I think. Was it that much? Yeah. I don't know, but but I think the, they they didn't even come to the council and ask for a reduction. They just paid it. So in your I mean, they got a deal on the property anyway at exactly. that particular That's case. We're saying, why did we give him that? He got such a deal to begin with. Yeah. In your opinion, is there anything specifically within this language that you think we as a board should should know in the way it's going to change our daily no it like i said in all my time here it's been one case that that it came into play where this really clarifies the legislative intent of what the council wants they the they can give authority they can take it away um there are certain things that i mean basically they want this board to be the trier of fact is there a violation, and is the person in front of you the person that's responsible for the violation? And to do that, uh, it's just making it clear you rely on the code as written and interpreted by the experts, so to speak, and uh, apply the facts to that law and vice versa and determine if there's a violation and, and if that person charged is the one responsible. The expert today is Tim. McGarry. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And another question of this case that we were referring to, is he still renting property, do you know? Is he still? Talk about Mr. Schlitt. Mm -mm. Um, what was his name? Carol. Carol. Oh. As far as I know. Oh, we don't have any idea. Oh, 
I don't know. So he's still doing until somebody says no. I'm sure yeah. there's hundreds of people out there doing it. Yeah, there's. He's the one that got caught. As as a gentleman, I don't know if you saw or came to the uh, legislative delegation, but we had a discussion of this because one of the things I did was ask the legislative delegation to support um, legislation that would basically repeal what this, the legislature had done uh, by preempting local governments from prohibiting these short-term rentals in residential neighborhoods or anywhere, really. <laughs> Um, their duration, how many times you can per year. And they made some changes last year, but it still didn't fix the problem. Their true problem is they, they've taken away the ability of local governments to regulate your zoning districts uh, where these things can be. And even uh, Senator Altman right away recognized, well, these things are more like hotels. Well, yeah, uh, except there's no on-site management either to keep things in check. So uh, that's one of the problems. And whether or not something will come out of that, who knows. Um, but we are going forward with some modifications to our code that should to enhance enforcement. And, and I know the council is very uh, strongly in support of continuing enforcement. Uh, I would like to make a statement. I've read the uh, document twice. I've had some questions, and I believe you helped me answer some of those. Uh, I am in full concurrence with the change that they propose. I would rather rely upon the professional experts that this city employs for an opinion rather than my own, which is that of a layman. And uh, that's the way I see it. Uh, the more professional, the better the expert, the better this town will run. And another thing in terms of uh, this board, I happen to believe strongly in local control, local input. I like the human element that we sometimes, no, we always display. And uh, I, I like the fact that citizens talking to citizens rather than somebody that could be from anywhere making decisions for us. Mm -hmm. I will end my statement by saying local control. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have anything they'd like to add before we adjourn? Hearing none, I will adjourn the meeting. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. And Happy New Year. <laughs>